Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, two shout outs before we begin today's lesson, Fun Facts with Miss Bird. Um, shout out number one, Tom Brady. It is a tough day in Boston, but thank you, sir, for all you have done for us, and we will be sad to see you go. You know that you're a Bostonian when Tom Brady is the top story right now. Um, shout out number two. On a much happier note, um, today is dedicated to my man, Daniel, in class. He has been looking forward to this day and so excited to share his Irish heritage um, with us. So today is dedicated to him. We'll definitely do something, buddy, when we get back. I know that you are excited about this one. Um, so Slancha, I think that's how you say it, Slancha. And let's get going. Today, um, we are going to talk about the legend of the leprechauns. I didn't want to get too far into the whole, what is St. Patrick, who is he? Because um, I know that we have faiths of all different kind in our classroom and I want to respect that. But I did find some cool stuff on leprechauns. So let's get started. So what is the truth behind the leprechaun legend? Where did it come from? Ireland. And kind of how has it evolved to what we think about it today? So here's what we know about this mysterious Irish little fellow, aside from the fact that Lucky Charms is an amazing cereal. We can agree on that, right? So what is a leprechaun? I'm sure you've heard of it before. So legend has it that a leprechaun is a type of fairy, actually, um, that stands about two to three feet tall. So that's about the height of maybe the TV. That's about two feet tall. Now, a leprechaun is usually described as a bearded man who wears a green suit and a hat. According to legend, um, there are no female leprechauns. I don't know how I feel about that, um, but that's the legend. It's really old. According to stories, the leprechaun is a shoemaker. And when a leprechaun is near you, you can actually hear the tapping of his tiny hammer as he drives nails into shoes. In the olden days, shoes were usually made of wood and leather and you would have had to nail them together. Um, these little men are also said to be very mischievous, I do like that, and enjoy playing tricks on those that they meet. So are leprechauns real? Most people think that the leprechaun is a mythical creature. So the answer would be no, they're not real. But Old Irish tales say that this little mischief maker is real and was first spotted back in the 700s. That's not 1700s, that's 700s, so way, way back. Stories about leprechauns have been passed on for generations. And in the beginning, that's what they were, right? So in um, the really ancient times, there was no writing, oftentimes there was no written language. So as we've learned about with our Native American tales, these stories would have been told verbally. Um, especially in the winter, in the long, dark months, when you're with your family together, kind of on days like this, right? Telling stories is something that you do to pass the time. As for its name, the word leprechaun actually comes from an old Irish word. I do not know how to say this. Lacorpan, um, which means small body. So, fitting. What about the pot of gold? So where does this fit into the legend? Um, gold. It's said that every leprechaun has a pot of gold, and according to the legend, the leprechaun must give the treasure away to anyone who captures him. But this little fellow won't let his treasure slip away easily, and the stories say that leprechauns are very sneaky and can usually not get captured. So there's another story that you can find a leprechaun's pot of gold if you follow a rainbow. Um, you never know. I guess we'll keep looking. Do they always wear green? I actually did not know this. I thought this was really interesting. So before the 1800s, leprechauns were described as actually wearing red suits instead of green ones. But that changed in the late 1700s when an Irish poet named William Allingham wrote about a leprechaun dressed in green. This image became the one that stuck, and it's the one that we are most familiar with today. So originally, I would have been wearing red today, um, but Thanks to a poet who changed the color to green in one of his poems, we get to celebrate in Boston wearing green. So where are they now? Um, 
who knows, right? Because we can't find them. But a small Irish town called Curlingford, leprechauns are an officially protected species. After a local came to see a leprechaun in the area, a law, a real law, was actually passed in 2009 to keep the little le leprechauns safe. And according to the locals, the last living leprechauns, all 236 of them, which seems like an oddly specific number, still live in this region. Um, this is actually a picture of Carlingford, Ireland. It's beautiful. Um, there's a reason they call it the Emerald Isle. You can see all of the green. It's really stunning. And here's the downtown of the village. Again, we see that contrast of the green and the red, just like the legend. So I hope you liked learning about leprechauns today. I didn't know a lot of that. Um, I've celebrated St. Patrick's Day since I was a kid. I'm Scottish, so I kind of celebrate it like we all do, right? Wear green, get some shamrocks, um, eat some candy. <laughs> but it was really interesting to learn a little bit more about this specific part of the holiday and the legend that goes along with it. So some suggested activities for you to do at home today. Um, first off, write a limerick, and I'll get into what a limerick is in a second. You know I love poetry. Uh, two, create a treasure hunt or a hunt for gold in your house or yard. Um, you could even make like a treasure map in your house. That could be kind of cool. Do some research on Ireland. I've never been to Ireland. I definitely want to go. It's someplace that I really want to visit. Um, but they have tons of cool websites um, for you to check it out. And it's really stunning. So I almost recommend looking at pictures a little bit more than text on this one um, because it's a special place. Make a map of Ireland. We know how to make maps. You could do the border, the different countries around it, bodies of water. You can make a key with some symbols. And finally, take a virtual vacation of Ireland using Google Earth or Google Maps. If you haven't used these websites before, I have linked them um, on the presentation and I'll share this presentation with you so you can go ahead and get to those websites. You can type in Ireland and literally take a virtual vacation. You can zoom in, you can travel down the roads, check out different things. Um, Google Earth and Google Maps are great resources when thinking about visiting a place, especially when you can't leave your house, you can kind of leave it in your imagination, right? So let's get back to that first choice, write a limerick. I wanna explain that one a little bit and give you some tools. So what is a limerick? A limerick is a humorous poem, meaning funny, consisting of five lines so it's short so don't stress out if you think that you're not good at poetry remember everyone can write poetry um and this is a really fun one to try so i suggest it so the first second and fifth lines have seven to nine syllables again this is about it doesn't need to be perfect and i'll show you some examples and those three lines all end in the same rhyme and remember the rhyme pattern is the sound at the end of the word, cat, bat, hat, for example. The third and fourth lines only have five to six syllables, so they're a little bit shorter. And those two lines rhyme and are different than that other rhyme. So if my first rhyme was cat, hat, bat, this third and fourth line may have a star, far rhyme, something like that. So it's a little bit different, the rhyme scheme. So limericks kind of follow this template. So the first line is, there once was a da 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 Or another way to start it was, I once met. We'll see this word once a lot in limericks. Again, you don't have to use it, um, but it's a great way to get started. And again, I'll share these templates with you online so you can try to write your own poem. So what does one look like when we put it together? So here's one that I came up with. It doesn't really make sense, but again, remember that limericks don't have to. And I wrote the line and then I put the syllable count after just so you can kind of see that da 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 pattern. So there once was a fly on the wall. I wonder why it didn't fall. Because its feet stuck or was it just luck or does gravity miss things so small? Limerick number one. Thank you. And I'll leave you with this one for today. Um, special coronavirus edition of St. Patrick's Day limericks. You are watching your teacher on screen because of this COVID-19. Because we still yearn to get up and learn and don't forget to keep those hands clean.
So with that, I will leave you for today. I hope you have a fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Do something creative, do something fun. Um, yeah, just because we can't go out necessarily doesn't mean that we still can't learn and keep ourselves engaged and take care of each other. So that's all for today and I will see you later on. Thanks guys.